morning, Marie. It's great to see you here. Hello, everybody. I'm going to make a really, really pretty card today. So, hi, Fran. Nice to see you. Good morning, Deb. Oh, you guys are so sweet. Good morning, Elaine. Hi, Carol. Hi, Pam. It's nice and sunny here today. We had a couple of storms yesterday. I actually lost my internet right during the time I would have been doing a Facebook Live. So I was really, really glad that we have a nice sunny day today and I don't have to worry about that. Hi, Lynn. Hello, Marie. It's good to see everybody. Sherry's here. Good morning, good morning. Yeah, I'm still drinking coffee. <laughs> I'm drinking my coffee black. That's not normal for me. I usually put whipped cream in it. Yes, you heard that right. We make a lot of whipped cream around this house. We're all kind of addicted to it. Who else do we have on here? Hi, Trudy. Good morning, Karen. Good morning, Carol. Good morning. Another Karen, yay. Thanks, you guys, so much. You're already sharing. Um, you know, I was looking at this card. I Actually, the card that I posted, I don't actually have any embellishments on it, so I'm not really sure what to do as my giveaway on this card. And then I got to thinking, well, I could add a really cute embellishment to it for kind of in-person giving. Um, of course, you could mail it. It would just be a little bit bulkier. Did you guys know that if you mail anything that's larger than one-fourth inch wide, you have to put an extra... 15 cents on it along with your regular stamp or you can also buy some stamps they call it it's stamps between one and two ounces you can get those from the post office as well oh it's good to hear that I'm not the only one drinking coffee with whipped cream apparently Karen's sister does that as well um, actually we put very very little sugar in our whipped cream so all we're after is the fat because if you have enough fat in your life you won't be hungry and then oddly enough when you have enough fat and you're not hungry you don't eat as much and you literally lose weight so <laughs> my tip of the day <laughs> or else a really elaborate excuse for for putting whipped cream in my coffee <laughs> oh goodness Welcome, welcome. Well, I think I'm going to flip the camera down. I honestly, I don't have anything really to share with you today beyond doing this little card. Um, well, maybe a few little things, but but mostly the card. Uh, so let me flip the camera down and we'll get started. Yes, yeah, so one of my projects today is to go grocery shopping so I can get more whipped cream in the house. <laughs> oh, you guys. All right. So here is the card we're going to make and I think what I'll do as my giveaway today for when you comment and share, um, actually the giveaway will be, today is Tuesday, I'll do the giveaway tomorrow morning. Um, when you comment and share, I think the giveaway will have to be um, a gold faceted gem, not just one, but I'll give you several because this, I think this card would look really, really good with a big gold gem here. And I happen to have some on my desk. So I'll, on the card that I make today, I'm going to go ahead and add that. So, oh, people are asking me about the holiday catalog. You know, I've had a few people ask if I would be sharing the holiday catalog pre-order that I've received. And, you know, I already did share it. I shared a lot of the pre-order. Well, I didn't even order it. Stampin' Up! gave it to me for free on the cruise. I shared it with my downline group. You know, this is really a demo perk to have the the catalog, or, you know, to be able to order from the catalog early. I think if I do any online sharing of products that I have in the house, it will probably be at my, you know, just little sneak peeks in my Happy Stamper Stamping to Share group. Um, that's really for my primo fans and customers. So, yeah, I don't, I don't do the big <clears throat> unboxings. I've done a few in the past, but I just find like it gets everybody really sad that they can't order it because they're not demonstrators. So <laughs> that's, that's why I don't do it. I don't want everybody sad. I want you happy. <clears throat> Excuse me. I do need more coffee here. Give me a second to get a big swig and then we'll get started. 
Oh, somebody's asking if I got the Cardinal set. You know, I did. And I'm not even sure that it's one I would have ordered immediately because, well, as much as I love Cardinals, there's just so much to pick from in that catalog. And I was really super excited about the Moose Punch um, because we just love mooses up here in Minnesota. And so <clears throat> I did get it. And the reason I got it is because I got the stamp set free on the Stampin' Up! Cruise. And then I'm trying to think. I think there was some paper in that suite and some other things. So I did get that in the, the cruise. Elaine was asking about that. All right. So let's go ahead and get started. We are going to make this beautiful card. It says blessed on the outside. And then on the inside, it says true friendships is one of God's greatest gifts. Now, I know that a lot of times when I am done and I put all the information up on the Facebook um, see more section of the post, I often will have people place orders. So I just want to remind you that when you use a host code in August you and you order at least $75, you will receive the Perennial Essence Floral Centers as a gift from me for using the host code. If your order is at least $25 and you're using a host code, even if you don't go up to $75, you do get paper perks and that's always um, a sampler of a current designer series paper. So I wanted to share that with you. And then also, I can't stress enough, we have our extra extra promotion right now. So if you're thinking about becoming a demonstrator, well, yes, you would get that holiday catalog early. And yes, you would get to order holiday catalogs, just like all of us demonstrator people are right now. So it's a $99 starter kit and you get to pick $155 worth of product. And that's just like awesome. And uh, then in addition, in the future, you would get 20% off all your purchases. And I support both business-minded demonstrators and hobby demonstrators. I would say for the most part, my group is my group just really joins Stampin' Up! to get their products at cost. And we have a great um, Facebook group where we support each other. And mostly we focus on sending cards to people. That is our, that's kind of our gig. Um, and then, so, so talk to me if you're interested in that. The next thing I want to encourage you to do is to redeem any bonus days coupons that you may have ordered in July. You have through August 31st to do that, and I'm actually calling a customer as soon as this Facebook Live is over to assist her because um, sometimes it can be a little confusing. Now, if you're in my Happy Stampers group, I do have a PDF there, but sometimes even that's confusing if you're not real computer savvy. So again, here is the bundle that we're going to be working with today. And let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing that we're going to need is our card base. And this has kind of an unusual color. I don't know if you noticed, but we're going to be using gray granite. And so the card base is five and a half by eight and a half. And I've scored it at four and a quarter. So it looks like this. And then we're also going to need a panel that we're going to be putting over the top. I'm going to set that aside for a second because I want to focus on the inside panel. So I've been showing you the inside of the card yet, and it looks like this. True friendships is one of God's greatest gifts, and it is beautiful. Now, in a minute, I'll show you the colors that I use to stamp the, the leaves. Um, and this I just freehand stamp so that because I have everything else set up on my stamp apparatus that I'm going to be showing you. <clears throat> Sorry, I don't know what is wrong with my voice today. More coffee, excuse me. <laughs> Goodness sakes. Okay, so here it is. You'll need a piece of Whisper White paper, four by five and a quarter. And I did pre-stamp this because it's just simple. You And you know what, in, you know what makes it even more simple? This is what Stampin' Up! calls a photopolymer stamp set. So literally, it's see-through. You can figure out exactly where to put it. It's also really nice when you have a photopolymer stamp set for doing um, multiple stamping in the same place because you can see right through where to stamp it. All right, so good morning, uh, Glenda. Good morning, Philomena. Good morning, Andrea. I could say Andy because I know you. Thank you for joining us. Um, it's great to have you guys here. So thank you again. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put this into my uh, card 
and I'm just going to use some snails. So I'll just put a little snail here across the top. That's all you need. It makes it look a little more elegant to have it loose and flowing like that. And now the next thing we need to do is we're gonna take this gray granite panel and we run it through the Big Shot machine. Again, it's four by five and a quarter. Whoops, excuse me. And I already did this in advance so that we wouldn't have to take the time, but it looks like this and I used, I didn't even show you this, it's our basket weave um, dynamic embossing folder. So it really gives deep, deep impressions. And to put this in, I could use snail, but I find that when the impressions are this deep and you run the snail over the top, you really don't get in on all of the, the parts and um, sometimes it doesn't stay as well. So I'm going to use multi-purpose liquid glue. So I'm gonna add a little more glue than I would normally do just because I want this to lay nice and flat and there's there's all these bumps in here so we need a little extra to get everything to stay nice and, and flat for us and not come off the card. So we'll put this in and then I with the glue is really nice because I can kind of wiggle it into place which I just love. All right, here we go. We have it. That part of the card is done. Now let me grab some other materials that we're going to need. And I did pre-cut a lot of this. So I'm gonna I'm gonna throw this um, set of wild rose dies out here so you can see what I did. First of all, I took a couple of scraps of paper. This one is Granny Apple Green, and I cut this little thing out of it. And this one is garden green and I cut this leaf shape out of it. So we have two images or two little cutouts that look like this and these make absolutely adorable accents on your cards. So they don't actually match really a stamp but that's okay because I'm going to show you how you use this. Notice on this card I have one kind of dipping down here where my sentiment is and then I have another one kind of coming off the top of the rose. I love it when Stampin' Up! includes these little extras. They're just really nice. Thank you so much you guys for sharing. Um, again, I'll do the drawing tomorrow and my giveaway of course will be the card and then I'm going to give away some gold faceted gems. The next thing that we're going to need, and I'm going to set this up on our Stamparatus, and for those of you that watched my video a couple of days ago, you kind of know the routine, but I love using the Stamparatus for working with, um, you know, two or three sets stamping. So I've just got a four inch square here, and I'm gonna put this up here, and we're going to make the leaves first. So the first thing that I want to do and I have this all set up on my panzels, is I'm going to use Garden Green ink. And let me grab a stamp set here. I'm just gonna support it with a stamp set below. Why do we use support underneath our plate? It's so that when you ink it up, you can ink it flat, and you don't end up getting ink all over your plate. If you have the plate at an angle, and you try to ink it up at an angle, there's a very good chance that you'll be getting ink all over your plate, and then when it's all over the plate, <laughs> right on the hands, after it's on the hands, right on your project, so not good. All right, so here we go with our first image. Of course, I didn't quite press hard enough here on this left side, there we go. And then the next thing that we're going to do is flip this plate around, and on this side, I have something that I'll be inking up. It's the middle set of stamps for this uh, leaf image. And it's Granny Apple Green. So again, let me set this on here. And now I'm going to use a piece of scrap paper. One would think I could use some scrap paper, except I can't find any. Hold on. We'll use this. Because just in case there's ink here, I don't want it on my, on my Stampin' Up! stamp case. All right, so I've got the granny apple green. We're going to ink up this image. And we'll just stamp this right over the top. And there we go. And then one more final image for the leaf. 
And again, we're switching out plates. You can purchase extra plates from Stampin' Up, which is really nice, especially if you're making multiples and you wanna just have everything all set up. We're gonna use pool uh, pear pizzazz for our next image. And this is kind of the all over image. So this fills in everything. And there it is, and it looks just great. All right, so I would um, like to share with you what I did here. You can actually keep moving this around so that you are stamping in all four of these corners. That's a very efficient way to get a lot of images. And then imagine this being all four corners. When you set it on your die cutting machine and you, and you line up those corners because you know they always are lined up when you're going all the way around in your square, you can take your leaf cut out and cut out two images at the same time, which really, really saves a lot of time if you're doing multiples. So this is good to know for future Christmas projects, just saying, because that's usually when we're making lots of multiples. All right, so what are we gonna do next? We're going to do the flower. So let me flip this around, and we're going to do our flower um, outline first. Now, with this stamp set, this is definitely more a traditional rose color, the, at least for a wild rose. I don't see too many yellow, actually I may have never seen a yellow wild rose. That in, in yellow is what I did on my last Facebook Live. Today we're gonna to use these beautiful pink colors, which is much more typical of the wild roses that I see here in the road ditches of Minnesota. I'm sure that there's different colors of wild roses, but the ones that, that I'm most familiar with is this beautiful, just this beautiful array of pink that we see here in Minnesota. So the colors that we're going to use on our rose today, let me get all these greens out of the way. We are going to be using, for our outline stamp, Melon Mambo. And let me just open this up and get it ready. For the next set of images that go over the top, we're going to use Flirty Flamingo. And the next one we're going to use is Blushing Bride. Lynn's telling me she lost one of the magnets. Oh, you know, that magnet could be anywhere. Anything could, it could be sticking to anything. I've found magnets in very strange places. Um, I would, one thing that's nice to know is if you ever break your magnet or if you lose a magnet and want to get one, you can always reorder just the magnets from Stampin' Up. I usually recommend that we only put out one magnet at a time and I keep my spare back here, and that's literally what I think of it as a spare. I would rarely, rarely use both magnets at the same time, actually never, because if the magnets get even this close, they could snap together. Maybe not that close, but you know what I mean. You, they don't have to be very close, and all of a sudden they're snapping together, and when they snap together, they break. So just a little tip there. All right, so what are we going to do? Well, we're gonna stamp this beautiful flower on a piece of paper, and we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna fill it up with both sides. So one, oh, and I should tell you, it's three and three-fourths by six and a half, but literally, you guys, it's just scrap, whatever you wanna use. So I have um, my first flower here that I did before the Facebook Live, just to make sure that um, it all was lined up and working. So let me go ahead and stamp this next one for you. So again, we're gonna start with the outline and we're gonna ink that up with Melon Mambo. Whoops. Oh yeah, I'm doing this right. Oh no, I'm not doing it right. Did you just see what I did? Oh no, I'm doing it right. <laughs> oh my gosh, do I need to go back to bed? Just ignore me. No, don't ignore me. Just, just bear with me, that's the correct terminology. Bear with me this morning. All right, so there we go. We have our outline. Now I'm going to put this plate away and we're going to grab our other plate. Again, extra plates are really handy and we're gonna do that middle layer, which adds a lot of texture to your rows. And we're gonna do the middle layer with Flirty Flamingo. So make sure this is all up in the corner just like it's supposed to be. And then we're going to take this flirty flamingo and just stamp that right over the top. 
and it looks great. Look at that, how beautiful. Um, for those of you that are watching who are demonstrators, I've made my decision about where I'm going to our local November event. So for those of you, as I mentioned, that are demonstrators who are going to be going to Atlanta for our local um, on stage, that's where I'm going to be. So if you, if you are there and you see me, please come up and, and talk to me. I'd love to see you. Love to meet you in person. So I know we have a lot of followers here from that area of the United States. So I will be in Atlanta in November. And my husband's coming too, so that'll be really fun. All right, so now the third color. And what did we use? We used Blushing Bride. Then we're just gonna stamp that all over and that puts our third and final color over the top. Now what we wanna do is we're going to take some Daffodil Delight and I've got the little center of the flower and we're just gonna stamp Daffodil Delight in the center. And you wanna do this a couple of times to kind of really emphasize that the center is yellow. So I do it like two or three times on each flower that I create. Now I'm gonna set this aside because I actually have one all ready to go. So let me show it to you. Here it is, and I have it all pre-stamped and ready to go. So I did cut it out with my die cutting machine. I have my, my leaf already prepared. Um, the next thing I wanna share with you is you'll need a scrap of Daffodil Delight, and then you want to cut out a section just like that so you have something to stamp your sentiment on and I also want to share that you can you can if you're doing multiples and you want to stamp your multiples a whole bunch of times guess what let me open this up this is how you would set it up so I don't actually have this set up but I'm just gonna set it up here to show you what you do so you could just lay this here hold on let me get this out of here Lay this here in the corner, secure it with your magnet, and then set it up so that your blast is gonna come right where you want it. So for example, you would take your blast stamp, this is how you set it up, and you would figure out exactly where you want it on your card, like so, and then you would make sure that your magnet's holding everything down then, if that's exactly where you want your blast, then you could come in. Hold on, I gotta take a stamp off of here. Then you could come in with a plate and just go like this to grab that stamp. And then, well, as long as I've gone this far, we might as well stamp it. So now use some Tuxedo Black Memento Ink. Ink up blast and you can stamp that down, just like so. See how easy that is? And then one of, once, of course, you have it all lined up and you love it, you love the way it's working and where it's stamping, then, hold on, then when you wanna stamp more, you can have a whole pile of these already cut out and then you just keep switching, switching in and out with your next one and just keep stamping away. So, isn't that cool? All right, now let's see, what is the next thing that we're going to do? Oh, Luz is saying she wants to meet me. Well, I would love to meet you too, Luz. It would be awesome. Come to our event in November in Atlanta and we'll get together. All right, so let's see, what do we need to do here next? Let me get this out of the way. And, oh, you know what? I forgot to show you this, but I'll just show you it real quick now. Just grab some scrap white paper, white whisper white, or if you want measurements, it's one and three fourths by five and a quarter. And then you're going to take this cool little, um, I don't know, it's, it's sort of like a little border die. Cut it out so that you have this, and then you're ready to start putting your card together. So let me grab all the goodies here and we'll go ahead and put this together. I think I've got everything I need. I hope. 
All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is put our border on because the border is going to determine where everything else goes on the card. Deb is saying she was glad to meet me in Minneapolis. Well, Deb, I was so wonderfully glad to meet you too. Thank you for coming up and introducing yourself. Lynn wants to know if customers can come. No, <laughs> it's a demonstrator only event. But Lynn, I know you live very close down there. And so if you're not a demonstrator by that time, I'd still love to get together with you. We could certainly uh, have coffee. Uh, I would love, love, love to meet you in person because you, you, I just looked it up the other day, have actually been a demonstrator or a customer of mine since 2013. That's incredible. I love that. Okay, so then you're gonna put this on kind of towards the bottom, maybe about a half inch up. Oh, you guys, I screwed up. Shoot, shoot, you know what I forgot to do? I put this panel on so quick. I was so anxious to get out of the way, to get it out of the way. Normally, I would trim this even with my panel of basket weave here, but I'm gonna trim it even with just the side of the card. So we'll do that. Oh yes, Lynn says, let's have coffee with whipped cream. Yes, we will, absolutely. That's gonna be so much fun, Lynn, I can't wait. All right, so there we go. So we have our card ready. The next thing we're going to do is we're going, to, oh, and I did the same thing. I should have put the blood, all this should have been done before I put this panel of, of the basket weave down. So anyway, learn from my mistakes. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the blast, and again, we're just going to glue this down. And I think what I did on my other cards is I lined it up with this little section here. Well, then it trims off perfectly with the basket weave, but I'm gonna move it over since I didn't do that. So I'm moving it over just a little bit so that I have about the same amount sticking out on each side, and then I will trim that even with the card. You guys, I am so sorry that I just did not actually put this together quite right. I mean, this looks okay, but I would like it better. Let me show you the difference. So this is the difference. Here's the one where I trimmed before I laid that basket weave down. And here's the one I had to do because I didn't do it right. I mean, it's not that big of a deal. Your average person would not think that's a big deal, but you know, it kind of bugs me. I'm a little bit of a perfectionist. Okay, then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take this little piece of granny apple green and we are going to just glue this on. Oh, Marty is here. Hi, Marty. Oh, she's gonna have to catch the replay, she said. Her granddaughter's with her. Oh, how exciting. How exciting to have a granddaughter to spend the day with. I wish that were me, but not yet. And I don't wanna hurry my kids because, you know, I don't wanna be that person that's hurrying her kids to have kids. <laughs> All right, the next thing we're going to do is we're gonna take this leaf and we're going to just cut off this one right here. So I had a fuzzy on my scissors. So let me do that. So we're cutting off this little leaf right here because we're going to use that somewhere else. Um, this particular leaf, let me see if I can get it lined up. Once you have this figured out, it's nice to just keep doing the same thing. So we are going to line this up like this. I think this looks really good where this little section here kind of just matches up with that section of the leaf. Look how good that looks. So I'm gonna flip it over. And I'm gonna take some scotch tape and just tape that down. I do have a method to all this madness. All right, and now the little leaf here, this little piece, we're gonna go to the opposite end, almost the opposite end, and, well, it is pretty much the opposite end. We're just gonna tape that leaf in right there. So it kind of is a couple of leaves across from each other. If you guys have ever seen wild roses in the wild, they have a lot of foliage. So all these leaves is very applicable for a wild rose set. So now the next thing we're going to do is just put a bunch of dimensionals on here. So let me grab them. Oh dear, where did they go? I have my minis, but I don't want to mess with minis. I want my big ones. And of course, 
I don't see them. Hold on, I'll go grab them. Always something, you know. So we're gonna just drop some dimensionals on so that we can raise this all up. Oh, Bonnie's telling me she's a perfectionist too. I think she's telling me that. She's saying she loves it that I'm a perfectionist. <laughs> so I'm assuming if someone loves that I'm a perfectionist, then they're probably a perfectionist too. That's how we all relate here. <laughs> you know, you always relate to people you like. Okay. Now, the next thing is I'm just going to grab a little tiny mini dimensional and pop that on this leaf out here because I don't want that one just being all sad and floppy. We're going to make everything stand up real nice. In fact, I should mention Bonnie is one of my um, downline members, and she also joined Stampin' Up! just so she could get the discount. Because she felt like, you know what, hey, I order enough every year that I deserve this discount. So thank you, Bonnie. Thank you for being a part of my team. Okay, so we're going to flip this up. Whoops. We're going to go like this. So we've got these pretty flowers up here. And I think that all looks good, doesn't it? Okay, down it goes. All right, so now this is where <clears throat> this little leaf is going to come to our rescue and balance everything. Because right now, everything kind of looks a little bottom right heavy. And all we have to do is tuck this leaf underneath and we're gonna have magic. So let me prove it to you. I'm going to get a little glue here. Just add a little bit of glue to the stem. Just a couple of dots here. And now, I'm going to turn this over. We're going to tuck this in right about there. And look at that. It's, it's magic. It just balances everything out perfect and it looks gorgeous, doesn't it? Okay, so the giveaway that I'll be giving for, for those of you that are sharing this video and for those of you that are commenting and telling me where you're watching from and asking questions, I just love that. I'm going to take your pick tool. We're going to take one of these lovely, love, I mean, where else can you use these really big ones? We're going to take this lovely uh, gold faceted gemstone and we're going to set it right in the middle of that big, beautiful rose. And there it is. And oh my goodness, I can't even tell you how awesome does that look? So then you wonder which one... Which one do you like the best? Do you like the one with the big gemstone or do you like the one that's that's uh, just stamped with daffodil delight several times? I don't know. I like them both. I think they're both really beautiful. So thank you everyone so much for joining me today.